So at this point what we've managed to do is we've loaded one piece of the data from the database. So all of this work is to give us basically the connection to the database so that then we can put pull stuff out of it. All we've done so far is say, give me the name of the social network in position 0 or 1 or 2 or 3. And I've only got three objects there or whatever, so if I put, give me the, the data in position 99 or 100, are you ever curious about that stuff? Type error. Social 99 is not defined. There is not a 99th. Uh, there is not a 100th object, because remember we count from 0. So this again is, this is why there's bugs in software. What are all the possibilities that someone could mess up? We messed ourselves up because there is no 99. And so what we want to do is, um, you know, we want to write code that, that works better, such as, okay, right now there's three things in the database, and later there could be, there's going to be nine. Am I going to manually have to write code for 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8? No, we will write loops. A loop will automatically show me and work with record 1, and then loop to 2, and to 3, and to 4 automatically. So we're going to create a loop, actually. And what it's doing right now is simply telling us what is the value in this key, which is name. And we've got more than one key, don't we? We've got the key of graphic, the key of desk, URL and so forth. So have you tried maybe saying what would happen if I put social zero dot desk? <coughs> well, you should see that when you do that and you click long form video. It pulls up the zero width description. And so it doesn't know that this description is tied with that picture. It just knows a sequence. And I'm saying, give me the zero with description, the zero with URL. What about that? Now these, um, I'm choosing these because that's what I made up. That's what we made up in the JSON file. We made up graphic, we made up desk, we made up name, and we made up URL. So here I'm saying, give me the zero with URL. And when I load that up, it'll connect to the database and pull up that URL. Okay, well, let's think like an ingenious fool. Well, what if I'm trying to load up bio? There's no bio uh, field. There's no bio key. So probably some error, some error should happen. In this case, I'm not getting a syntax error. I'm getting a logic error. Again, ignore the not well form. It's not giving me an actual syntax error and that sort of thing. It's more of an object. It's more of a <coughs> it's more of a logic error. In this case, it doesn't know what to do and it does nothing. There is no bio in social, so it doesn't do anything. I think technically it is trying to load bio, which is empty, so it is showing an empty string right there. I think it is showing emptiness. So we would further write more code to say to, to check is the result empty? If it's empty, display something else. So I'm gonna just put this back to, to name. And from my tests, something seems to be working. Good. We're still not quite there yet. But now we're we're getting there. Because what we want to do is we want to build um we want to build a display on screen. So here's where we'll, this will get fun here. Let's comment out that line. This is just sort of, again, a proof of concept. It works. We can pull data out of the database and show it on screen. Just comment that out. What we'll do is, is this on the, next, um, on the next line. Let's create another variable. We'll call it str equals empty. We're creating a string we're going to string together a bunch of this data because we have name, description, URL, and picture. All of those together I want to display them on screen. So I'm creating a, a variable, an object to hold all of that, and right now I'm making it empty. There's no space there. It's just 
a variable. It's it's a string. It's empty at the moment. I'm going to fill it with the particular data of that one record of the zero with record of the ninth record of the five thousandth record. Question. So basically, the one we commented out is just giving us that one thing. That one field in the record. The one name key in the social object. Next slide. We're going to type for, the word for, open close parentheses, and then open close curly brace. This is new. We haven't talked about for yet. For is one of the conditional statements. For is one of the conditional statements, one of the things to check for something, to do something. We had previously if else. Remember on one of the things we did previously, if, oh, it was on the username, remember? If username was null, then display a certain message, or else it's not null, so display their name. We checked on something. On the condition of it being null, do something. On the condition of not null, do something else. Here, this is another thing to check for conditions, and this is basically on the condition that we have stuff in the database, on the condition that there is, you know, three items in the database, or 12 items, or 1,200 items, on the condition that there is data in the database, do the following, display on screen all of my data. So the way we'll do this is, the way for works is you have to construct what are the parameters of my loop. This is going to be a loop. Do it once, do it twice, do it a thousand times. But what's my conditions? So we type for. Inside of the parentheses, we'll type var. We're going to create a variable at this moment to um, loop through, to jump through item 1, item 2, item 3, item infinity. And traditionally, the var that we're creating is called i. I think they just use it for index. And we set that equals to 0. We're creating a variable called i starting at 0. Remember, my JSON object goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, infinity. So we're going to start basically from 0. Check the 0th item. And the for loop is a very unique one. Its, its syntax is very unique. You don't really see this anywhere else. We're creating a variable at the moment right here. And then we're going to say semicolon here. Usually semicolon ends a statement, but we've got an end of a statement within the parentheses. It's very unique. You don't see this very often. Space, because then now we're saying um, start from zero and go off i less than uh, three. We're saying go from zero, one, two, three. That would actually take us to the fourth object. So I know it would be the third, right? Zero, one, two, because two is less than three. So it would do zero, one, and two. It would say do the following, the stuff in the curly braces, do the following as long as i is less than 3. So first we'll have 0 is less than 3, so do that. Then we'll have 1 is less than 3, do that. And then we'll have 2 is less than 3, do that. Then we'll get to 3. 3 is not less than 3, so it stops. But wait a minute. What if I add 70 objects? Then I'd have to go back to my code and write, you know, 70. I don't want to do that. I want to instead automatically have the code check how many objects are in the are in the database so the trick here is we're going to write response obj dot social dot length length is the keyword to check how many things are there in the array in the database this will always check and check right now there's three and tomorrow there's thirty and next time there's 3,000. So I don't have to go back and reprogram it to the maximum amount of objects in my array. I'm never going to be able to do that because as more people sign up for my social network, there will be a, yet a new name in the database. So this syntax here, response object that social, I've seen, I'm seeing that again, where up here I said, give me the zero with item here. I don't know which one. I don't know which one to use, but I want to know the maximum extent, the length. Another semicolon here, space, and then I++. 
this whole construct here is to is to loop over and over and over. Computers are great at doing mindless tasks. Do this over and over and over. And this is how we create a mindless task. Start from the first item in the database and go as far as the last object in the database, basically, and then do it again, basically. Because then I plus plus means add one to it. I right now is zero. Zero is less than three. And then it'll say add one to that. So zero becomes one. So now we go back here. Zero, so now that's a one. One is less than three. Do it again. That becomes a two. Two is less than three. Do it again. That becomes a three. Is three less than three? Three equals three. Three is not less than three. So it stops. The loop breaks and it stops. It stops doing the repetitive task. That's what a for loop is. A way for it to do something over and over and over some amount of times. What about controlling the speed it does it? No, it doesn't really control the speed. It's just the speed of your processor and such. Okay. The speed of it, if we did want to do that, and uh, we'd have to, I don't know, put timers and, and all of that. So the speed is it just does it as fast as your computer. Okay. Specifically, what I wanted to do is I wanted to, um, on screen, display the social networks. So we'll say um, we'll say uh, str equals we're going to start to build something to display on screen in quotes we'll type the div tag we're going to create a whole little valid div right here we're going to create a div to um, to display on screen, semicolon. No, I'm sorry. Wait, wait, wait. One thing here. Plus equals. Um, equals is take the thing on the right and put it into the thing on the left. So here, with a single equals, we would have taken the thing on the right and put it into the thing on the left. Actually, I want to add to it. So literally, this will be added. This is like that concatenation that we've done where we had you know result plus variable we're putting more content into the one variable we're adding to it so it's an empty string first and then we're adding a div to it this will make sense right here next line str plus equals let's close that div We wrote the div tag into that variable. We have stuff in the middle. And then we're going to close the div. Plus equals. Make sure you've got plus equals there. We're adding more to the variable. Let's back up here. And in between those divs, str plus equals, quotes, semicolon. So I'm writing valid HTML code here, which then eventually I'm going to do the .html to show it on screen. But here I'm building a, a little div. And what I want to display here is the image tag. SRC equals single quotes. Single quotes. Because I've got double quotes here. If I close those double quotes here, it breaks it. We've talked about this before. If you don't remember, just trust me. So, single quotes. It's like, you know, Sam and Ryan. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> so what we want to display here, image source. We want to display the picture. Remember, we've got pick one, pick two, pick three, pick four, etc. So here, I want to display it. Now, here's the tricky part. If I were to write, don't write this yet, pick 01.ping, it would literally display picture 1 
over and over three times because we're telling it to do it zero, one, two, three. I don't want it to display the first picture three times. I want to display the first picture, then the second picture, then the third picture. So I don't want to say what value to display here. I want it to instead, so again, still don't write this, I want it to display something more like that, I. Because we're using I here for, for zero. Um, so the tricky part here of what, what we need to do is um, this part right here needs to be dynamic. We can't hard code this. It has to be dynamic. It's got to change on its own when there are three objects, when there are 300 objects. So watch this first and then we'll do it. I'm going to end the quote here, space plus quote. That quote gets ended, that single quote is still open, plus open quote end quote, and then that gets closed right there. Back up. That's how it was. I'm going to end the quote, space plus, start the quote. After this uh, plus, actually we should add two pluses. You'll see why in a moment. Um, we're going to display some picture, the source is going to be right here, and then it's going to close it. The picture will be response obj dot social brackets i dot call it again, uh, pick, graphic, we call it graphic. Okay, so here's the dynamic part of it. We're using the same syntax as before. Response object dot social gives you the zero with object specifically its name. Response object dot social specifically its graphic. Well, here's the dynamic part. I didn't say a hard coded value. Zero never changes. If I write a seven here, it never changes. This one changes because that I is coming from right here. We're starting with zero. Give me the zero with position of the graphic, which is the YouTube graphic. Pick one. Then it does this part about the loop. This is zero plus plus becomes a one. So it loops and does all of this one more time. So now I has become a one. When it comes to this part again, now it's going to be response object social one. Give me the first one and show its graphic. It's going to loop again. Uh, I plus plus becomes a two. Loops do it all again through here. So this becomes a 2, and then this will be back at response object social 2. Give me the second picture. I put it in this string. And finally, on line 24, let's show it on screen. Um, dollar sign, pound, div, result. dot html semicolon str uh, this is the same as this up here my my div placeholder uh, write some HTML into it. I'm building a string here of HTML code, so write that. Notice it's not in quotes. Display what's in the variable, which is all of this code. Display that as HTML. 
on screen. You can do it three times. Save it and run it. Click the button. See what happens. Yes. I'm wondering Well, technically yes, because we are starting with an empty string anyway. There is no space there at all. We've just sort of said it. This is a string, but it's empty. So sure, that could have been an equals as well, and it would have replaced what was there and then started off. If it worked, it should look like this. You click three social networks. Okay, so <laughs> so raise your hand. Who did it work for? Okay. If it didn't work, let's take a quick moment to check. Here's the code so far. So, who did it not work for? Anyone? Remember, check your console. So it's simply a shape of the 
I think you know what it's going to be. It's going to be about space or something. Oh, I know what it is. Oh, wait. It's a quotation. You did the same exact thing. Quotation right here. No, wait. Yes, wait. Oh, yeah, that's right. How can I do this? Boom. Look at that. So 
All right, everyone, we're almost at the end of the day. Let's move on here. Uh, if this worked, what should happen then is that it shows the three social networks. Um, it's just going to go through them all and show them all. Uh, my JSON file is not complete in that it doesn't have a list of all my networks. Some of you already done it, so you're going to see all your networks. Very good. But I've got three at least to work with. Now, what I want to do earlier, as I said in the day, was I want to load them up randomly. Every time I click, I want it to display a different random network and its name and a clickable link. This right now, so far, is displaying all of my all of my pictures. Uh, don't do this, but for fun, I could have said, show me all the URLs. Instead of all the pictures, show me all the URLs. So now it'll go in sequence and show me a list of all the URLs. Oh, not really, because I'm trying to display it in an image. But that's the concept. Show me all the URLs in sequence. That's what this whole for loop is doing. So this whole chunk here does display uh, your picture in sequence, and since we're running out of time, I'm going to put a copy of my work with my original idea for this in the folder, but I do want to do the random part. Let's do the random thing. What I wanted to do is build here that it displayed all of the data sequentially. Instead, let's make it display it all randomly. So this whole section here of this whole for loop, I want to comment it out. I like what it does, but I just want to comment it out. I just want to comment it out because then I want it to work randomly. So remember the multi-line comment. Let's go to back to line 20 in front of the for loop and we'll type slash asterisk. And then at the end of line 25, asterisk slash. Now that for loop has been commented out. I might refine it and play with it later. Um, but what I want to do is work with random versions of the data. The way we will do this is Let's, um, next line, create another variable. We will call this one um, random SOC. This is a random social network equals. We've got um, the ability to create random numbers. Type capital M math dot random open close parentheses, semicolon, that creates a random number. But it creates a computer random number. It's going to be a number between 0 and 1, which means an infinite amount of numbers between 0 and 1. OK, I want a human readable number, because my indices right here are, are you know, integers. It's 1, it's 7, it's 12, it's 99. It's real numbers, not 0 0.997 and 0 0.0012. It's real numbers. So what we're going to do here is we need to say, um, give me actually a range rather than between 0 and 1. Give me a range between 0 and the maximum number of items in my database. So let's back up behind the, before the closing uh, semicolon. We'll do asterisk, this is multiplication. And the trick here is we're going to then say, if I wanted to give me a random number between 0 and 95, I would type 95. Basically, it would give me a random number between 0 and 95. Cool. Well, I don't want to write, again, a hard-coded value. I can use that dot length trick again. Response obj dot social dot length. Now, give me a random number between 0 and 3, in my case, between 0 and 30, between 0 and 1,000. But it could still um, sort of like, 
give me a weird number that's out of the range, so I want to round it off a little bit. I'm going to put uh, parentheses around the whole expression that I just wrote here. Math.random between 0 and the maximum length. Put, a, put parentheses all around that. And backing up, before the parenthesis, we will write then um, math dot floor round down to the floor. Yes, we also have round up to the ceiling. So if we want to round down, we do math dot floor. Take whatever number, you know, one point seven, and force it back to one. If we have one point seven, and instead do math dot seal for ceiling. 1.7 will be forced up to 2. So this will force it down or force it up. And I want that because what if I've got, you know, uh, a 1.3? It'll go to 1. I could still have a 0 0.99. That'll round it down to 0. I still want possibly a 0 value because I have the 0th position in my, in my object. So floor will guarantee that sometimes the random number will be a zero, and I want a zero sometimes. So here we go. This is creating a random number based on the total number of items we've got in our database, including zero. We will then use this to, um, on screen, display stuff based on the random number. So every time we click the button make a new random number because we've made a number every time it's it's inside of this get social every time we click get social think of a new random number and what we do with that random number is the next line very similar to what we did in the for loop but without the for loop we'll just type str I guess this time we'll do equals now we'll be consistent we'll do um, again we'll build this div semicolon. Uh, we'll close the, the div down here like we did up there. Inside the actual, between the divs. We'll do the image tag again. And we should just copy the line up there if it worked, which I will. I will copy the line up there. But this time, instead of I, random soak. And I'll copy that div result HTML display again. I'm creating a random number, let's say two. And then create the div, give me a picture for two displayed on screen. Every time I click the button now, because all of these operations happen every time you click the button. Give that a try. PouchDB is going to store all of its data in JSON format. PouchDB is a JavaScript library that will give us a bunch of commands. Pouch.save, pouch.get, pouch.put, and so forth. And it's going to save our data in <coughs> JSON format. So when we create our database for our classes, we're going to need to save CRN number, instructor name, class title, 
all of that will be saved in JSON format. Then we'll use Pouch to actually save it and retrieve it and delete it and update it. So these basic concepts of JSON are very useful to understand any of these modern NoSQL databases. Um, so if this worked, that little random thing is making a random picture. I've got three to choose from, so it's showing three pictures. Well, I've also got a name that I want to display, and I want the name to be clickable. So to, uh, to make this more interesting, what we'll do is after the line where we display the graphic, we'll add another string. And this time we're going to create a new paragraph. Open close paragraph. <coughs> Inside the paragraph, I'm going to write um, Okay, inside the paragraph, uh, let's write um, plus, wait, uh, quote, space, plus, space, plus, space, quote. I'm going to do that trick again from the previous line. Start my code, but then I've got to write something dynamically, and then continue my code. So notice here, start my code, write something dynamic, then continue my code. What I'm going to write dynamically on screen is, this whole chunk, I'm just going to copy this whole response object chunk and instead display the name. How will it know to put the YouTube name at the same time as the YouTube picture? We're creating a random number that is in play here and here at the same time. Randomly give me two and use it here and here. So that's how it knows to use both the second thing in the array. So then when I click it again, <coughs> think of another random number, zero. Use zero to display the zero with graphic and the zero with name. That's how it knows to link them together, because it's using the same index value. And the index and the data is just sequential. Don't you need a single quote to copy the syntax? Because it's gonna close. A single quote where? Like over here maybe? Uh, right after that first syntax, because isn't it gonna close? We, we want that. We want that because that's how this plus is going to work. Start the code of the p tag, and then I have to end it right there because now show something dynamic. Then show the rest of the p tag. So yeah, we do have to close it that way. Let me just let me just confirm. It should be that. Let me confirm. It is a little bit different than before, but let me confirm. So the reason I had single quotes and such elsewhere was I had to do this, image source single quotes, and then give me the graphic, close the single quote. So if this worked, it shows YouTube picture, YouTube text, Vine picture, Vine text. I've also got URL data. I've got URL data, and it might be nice to make those names clickable. So if I wrap the A tag around those names, see here, I backed up to these quotes. I started the P tag, show me something dynamic, close the P tag. I want to wrap an A tag around that text, and close the A tag. 
notice I close the tag in the quotes of the where the p tag ends. And the way an href, I mean, a tag works is with href, doesn't it? I have to use single tags, single quotes here. Because now you've got quotes and quotes, so be careful here. Here's a, where I will use single, single tags, single quotes. And that's got to be dynamic. Give me the zero width URL. Give me the seventh URL. That's got to be dynamic too. So I'll do the same thing here. Close the double quote, space, plus, space, plus, space, double quote. So now this whole chunk here is closed. Give me dynamic URL, close that one, now that's complete. Then give me more dynamic data, and then close it over there. So in here, between those quotes, I'm going to do the same thing. Response object, social, random, URL. So that's an href. That's an, that's, a, that's an href that we've worked with before. The big thing is now I've got to be dynamic. So I've got to do this where give me dynamically right now a random uh, address, give me its corresponding random graphic, give me its corresponding random uh, name. And how can I say corresponding random? Because there's a random number invented every time we click the button a random number every time. It's going to be the same random number used three times. So that's how you can use the same random number. So now Twitter is active. Vine is active. And I can click on that to open it up if you type the, the name correctly. Yep, it's supposed to be an active clickable link. I don't have the active link part. It shows the picture of the name. The act, I just finished, uh, this is the code for the active link right here. Oh, okay, that's right. So this exercise here for today was to start to think about JSON. JSON format. This is something that will come into play when we work with the database to create various records of data and then couple that with, <coughs> couple that with PouchDB. Um, this right now is working probably on your file, right? This is only working on your, your file here. When we get to PouchDB, we'll be able to save data and right now we're just reading data. We haven't gotten about writing data. What about if I ask, uh, you know, what's your name? I want to save those names in a JSON file, in a database. We haven't gotten to that. Um, but we're out of time, of course. So I'm going to put my code up to this point into the network folder. I'm also going to put the version, because uh, I had a version of it before the class started. It's basically the same, but you can look at it in two different ways. And um, this hopefully gets you thinking about more of this stuff. When the day ends today, we're going to, again, next week is spring break. There's no more class next week. Today's the last day of class. And then a week after that, we start the classes again. Tuesday, 6 p.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. Part 3. We're going to need to enroll again. I don't know if a bunch of new people are going to show up, so it is first come, first serve. Uh, you want to get here at a reasonable time? Hopefully I don't give your seat away. Probably not. I don't think a person will jump into part three without doing part one and two, but you never know. And so uh, we're going to have part three, and we're going to enroll and get started, and we're going to keep going to... Uh, we're going to keep learning on th these kinds of concepts. Uh, you know, the database and publishing it and all of that. So 
Any general questions on what we talked about today or the class? Yes. Would companies then publish JSON files that you can make this HTTP request and pull down that JSON file? Yes. Uh, basically, that's all of um, the API, Twitter API. The keyword is API. So most of the time, let's see if I can find a good example. On a lot of these, you have to register as a developer for free and then create credentials and such. But over here, like on Flickr, if we, if I go look this up here, give me, right here, response formats JSON. So here's Flickr that says, here's how to access our data. And it's in JSON format. And here's a bit of code. So here's, you know, here's how that is. Stat OK, blogs, there's their blog, their ID, their name, all of that. So yeah, these, uh, it's all up to the company to give you an API uh, and documentation. And here Flickr gives you all this documentation in all of these kinds of languages. You know, here's how to do it in Ruby, here's how to do it in ActionScript and, and, and all of this. So it's up to the company themselves, but more and more and more are doing this because it's, it's such a ubiquitous standard. So at this point, I'm going to wrap up the main lecture. We'll do a little lab time. I'll put my code in there in a moment and the videos. Thank you for coming, and hopefully see you in part three.